All right, welcome to science. We'll see how this goes. This is going to be a learning curve for me to figure out how to teach my uh, lessons this way, but bear with me. It's going to be good. So, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to just show you this document. Uh, this document here, 4.1 Immune System Overview. I will have it where I'm going to be including the link to this in Moodle. Now, with this link, as far as I know, <laughs> when you get it, it will be view only. And there's a reason for that, because I want you to be able to write your own notes. And so it doesn't work if all of you are trying to work on the same document at the same time. So what I'm going to ask you to do first, before you do anything else, after you've opened up the document, I want you to have it where you click file. You're going to have it then where you're going to select make a copy. Now, what I would like from you, because you are going to be sharing this with me, I want you to have it where you write your name. At the very beginning of it, keep the 4.1 overview there as well, but write your name before. And then click OK. What will happen is it's going to open up, and then this new document that's opening up, you should be able to edit it. If it doesn't work out, just let me know and I will try to work out those kinks, but this should work. <laughs> so with that being said, we're looking at the immune system. So this is going to be a short unit, quickly going over the immune system, how it works, how it takes care of us, some of the different components, and then we're going to move on to things like vaccinations and allergies uh, for the rest of this unit. So for today, the four things that make up the immune system. Now, actually, first of all, before I forget, go ahead and put your name on this. So put your name on there. Uh, I'm doing it on April 2nd right now. <laughs> You'll be doing it on the, what is it, the uh, 6th, I believe. Anyways, now over here. So the four things that make up the immune system. We have specialized cells. We also have proteins. We have tissues and we have organs. And then for the immune system, it has a specific response to each type of pathogen. Remember, the pathogens are going to be the microorganisms that are harmful for us. They can cause infection and disease. So the immune specific response to each type of pathogen is called a specific adaptive response. I know the lines get a little bit crazy with all of this here. You can feel free to clean it up if you wish or just leave it as is. I'm fine either way. And so that has to do with the immune system. When we end up having a pathogen that comes into our body, it has the immune system will have a specific adaptive response to that pathogen. Now some cells of the immune system, we have our red blood cells. They're also called erythrocytes. Now there's only one type of them and their job, honestly, is just to transport gases. And I know that sounds funny, but really what we're talking about right now is oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oops, look at that. <laughs> okay, now another name for a white blood cell is called leukocytes. Hoping I'm not butchering the uh, pronunciation of this. <laughs> so now there's, Actually, there's more than one of these. There's quite a few of them. And their job, plain and simple, is to fight infections. Now, with our leukocytes, they are made and stored in a few areas. We have the bone marrow. We also have the thymus, the spleen, and the lymph nodes. And we'll be getting into a little bit more of that later on. So... So far, so good. Hopefully you're following me as far as our red blood cells, our white blood cells, and some of the places that leukocytes are made and stored. Now, I'm going to stop this video for now and I will start it and take a look at the uh, different types of leukocytes coming up next. <laughs> 